Hey guys, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to do an estate sale haul. Yes, I know this sounds insane because you know Hurricane Ida just blasted through this area. <laughs> We ended up evacuating. It was uh, highly stressful. We didn't come back until Thursday after the storm. And then, you know, we proceeded to kind of camp, for lack of a better term, in our home with a generator um, when it was 100 degrees out. Literally, it was, you know, these heat indexes of 100 degrees every single day. Uh, our power did not end up coming back on until this past Thursday. So it was a. Uh, it was a, an exercise in survival <laughs> and an exercise in mental agility. If I don't do say so myself, um, let me tell you, it, I was there, I was at the brink. It was very difficult. It's very stressful, the whole thing. Anyway, so that's the long end and short of it. But anyway, there was a state sale today and apparently it had to be canceled for two weekends in a row due to the hurricane. These folks were like, ready to roll with this estate sale. So I was like, you know what? I wanna to go to the estate sale cause I wanna feel like a normal human being. So uh, I wanna have some fun. I wanna get back into the things I love doing the most, which is jewelry. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise, Nola Collectibles. I'm a part-time reseller and I sell primarily on eBay and I focus all primarily on jewelry. I'm a jewelry enthusiast. So yeah, anyway, talk, talk, talk. But I did wanna give you the update. And also um, I did wanna say thank you. So many people reached out to me via email email or direct message, um, which was so lovely. <laughs> um, really, it was really wonderful to hear from you guys and just see so many folks really caring and wondering about our status and wondering what happened. So like I said, it was not for the faint of heart, but you know, our house was okay. We're okay. You know, and for that, I am truly, truly, truly thankful. So anyway, let's get into it, you guys. So this estate sale, it was like legitimate, like hoarder house. <laughs> there was so much stuff in this house. They didn't even have it priced because there was so much stuff. And so they were just kind of like, grab whatever you want, come to us and we'll give you guys like a bulk deal. Okay, works for me. I was in and out of there in an hour. There's a massive amount of jewelry. And I'm gonna share with you some of the things I picked up. One piece of fabulous jewelry and everything was, I don't think I paid more than $5 for any single piece. So this was in there. This is a pretty fabulous panel bracelet. This to me looks very, very old. I'm thinking that this is likely late 1950s, possibly early 60s. You can see it's definitely um, almost like a Victorian revival or an Art Nouveau revival. It has some of those elements and I love, it's just a big, bold, paneled bracelet. Really, really cool, I think. And um, this one I thought just absolutely fabulous kind of piece of costume jewelry there. And so this was one of the pieces I picked up. I want to say maybe that this one was like $5. There was also a couple of other jewelry people there, which was very surprising to me because I go straight to the jewelry and I find most people go elsewhere at estate sales because we're not there for the same thing. But there was um, two women there online with me and they also went straight for the jewelry. So I literally had this woman, I'm like going through these Tupperware containers and this woman, she just like rolls up and just stood next to me. And she was like, I'm gonna look at that when you're done. I was like, uh, okay. And she just stood there, <laughs> you know, which is like kind of uncomfortable. But uh, I was like, you know, I saw you going through that box over there and I backed off, but whatever lady, I took my time anyway. I wasn't gonna rush on her account. Um, so I picked up this brooch too. I thought this was just really beautiful, lovely kind of little like mid-century inspired motif there. I do think, so this one is BSK. And um, again, you know, this one, not a huge kind of piece of jewelry that I'm gonna make a ton of money on, but I think I paid maybe a dollar for this one. And I think it's a good looking piece. It's got all of its stones intact. And so I thought that was a, a cute one to pick up. It's also very easy, I think, with these sales to get a little carried away because the competition is like so fierce and there's like literally people standing over you. So um, I do tend to kind of like hoard first and sort later. That's like my approach to it, uh, which is something I do with the thrift store too. If I see it, I put it in my cart if I want it and then I could always put it back a little bit later. And so this again, another really great piece of jewelry. And this is by the, the brand Florenza. I love Florenza. You guys have heard me talk about this brand in the past. 
It also is a bit of a Victorian revival kind of inspired approach that they take to jewelry. And I just love this so much. Just a beautiful necklace. The blue enamel I think is just very, very attractive. The little seed pearls, all of that on a beautiful gold tone chain. And this one's got a fold over clasp in very, very good condition. And again, we're not really missing anything here. And this one um, is versatile in that you can wear it as a brooch or you can wear it as a pin. So I really love that one. I wanna say maybe that one was also like either four or $5. So that was a great piece of jewelry. I also find like with estate sales, sometimes the quality tends to be a little bit better. And so, you know, you don't have to root through a jewelry bag to get to the treasures, you're finding the treasures. Um, this one she here, she just had it marked as gold tone necklace for $2. And I was really excited to see this because I recognized it um, as a Trafari piece. And so I don't know if you're aware, um, Trafari has, this is not, but it's similar to, uh, Trafari has these pieces called waterfall, waterfall necklaces. And they're usually a similar kind of motif here where it's like an arched pendant and it will have um, like lucite dangling uh, pieces coming from it, like a waterfall. They're very, very pretty, very, very collectible. And so this uh, is in that vein, just, you know, not with lucite, with tassels here. And it is in excellent condition and it is marked um, Trafari, crown Trafari, uh, Trafari with the crown mark right there on the back. In excellent condition. I like that it's like, um, you know, a multi-chain, let's focus, multi-chain and yeah, I was excited by that because she just, like I said, she had it marked as a gold tone necklace. And so that I thought was a very good pickup, something like that I could possibly turn around and sell for maybe like $40 to $50. Um, I think I pulled out this bag before and I took the bracelet out, but I also grabbed this and these were, this was only a dollar and it's really because they're like a repair because you could see they're knotted, but the knotting is like not in the best condition. There's a lot of space in between there, but these are really beautiful uh, Czech glass beads. I love the color on them. They're this like stunning red orange. They just look like yummy candy, you know? And so I couldn't leave these guys behind. Beautiful faceted red glass. You can see right there for a dollar I, I took them. I will um, probably restring them. I've pulled out all of my supplies lately. I've been doing a lot of restringing with um, Bakelite and um, similar pieces, Amber. I've done some Amber restringing lately as well before the hurricane. Um, but yeah, I probably will hopefully um, find a thread that, I don't know if I wanna go with something that looks like this th current thread that it has. I always like to kind of restore things as close to original as possible, but um, I don't know. I'm going to see what I have because I do have different kind of threads that I could utilize for that. And we'll see. But they're just, like I said, they look so yummy and I couldn't leave them behind for a dollar. I will restore them so that they are stunning and beautiful once again. Um, you guys, I, I know you've heard me talk about this brand <laughs> probably ad nauseum. This is a house pin by Lucinda. Lucinda Yates it makes these kind of crafty almost looking pieces that um, will feature homes and she'll do like seasonal ones. She does ones to raise uh, awareness for certain cause, like causes or issues like domestic abuse. And um, she's been around since 1989. And the reason why I grabbed this one, I will typically pick up the house pins by Lucinda because people think that they're craft projects. So they'll sell you them for five, you know, 50 cents or a dollar sometimes because they don't know that they're so collectible. People really like to collect them. And so the reason why I did grab this one though, because you can see it's, it doesn't seem like all too much of a special piece um, in terms of house pins by Lucinda and they get very fancy. But like I said, her company started in 1989 and this is actually signed by Lucinda herself. So this is a very early house pin by Lucinda. You, you can see the ones today have a label on the back that will say house pins by Lucinda. And this one is actually signed by the artist. And so this is a very early kind of house pin by Lucinda. And so uh, these are getting increasingly rare. And so uh, I definitely picked that guy up. I think that was a dollar. Where should we put the house pin? Cause I don't, back here, sure. Um, yeah, you guys, let me tell you this hurricane. Whew. It was a doozy. It really tested something in me. <laughs> we, of course, brought the cats with us as well. And, um, you know, we had to 
we got kind of like a mild sedative in advance and gave them essentially what's like kitty Xanax um, so that they would be comfortable for the uh, evacuation. And, you know, usually from New Orleans to Houston, it takes like five and a half hours. It took us over 10 hours because there was evacuation occurring in mass and it was just like dead traffic standstill at many points during the ride. So again, like I said, um, I'm happy that we, of course, we're going to bring our cats with us. Um, and they were like loving the hotel life. It was like Eloise at the plaza. <laughs> they were loving it. Um, but yeah, whew, I'm still like, I'm in recovery mode still. Um, I picked up these little cutie earrings right here. I don't know how vintage these are, to be honest. They could be something that's a little bit newer. But I think they're so sweet. I love just the rhinestones and I like the rose motif. I think they're very romantic. And you can see here at the back, it's almost like, it looks like almost like a rhodium plating on the back and they are pierced, um, which is why I said, I don't think that they could be that old. But I think, like I said, I love these. I think that these are gonna be something I end up keeping for myself because I think here in New Orleans, these will have many functional uses, like the Easter parade <laughs> or for Valentine's Day or, uh, I don't know, whatever costuming, uh, you know, occasion, which is frequently here, might arise. Uh, I just like them. I think they're super pretty. They're in great condition. And I think that those were uh, almost maybe like a dollar, maybe two dollars. I don't remember because I was grabbing from bags and just throwing it into other bags. Um... Let's see, I got these earrings right here, and these to me um, are very reminiscent of Miriam Haskell style. And I'll show you here. And they are screw backs, and they have a lot of the elements that make um, you know, Miriam Haskell's very signature. It's very known for the, the faux pearls that they integrated into the design of their jewelry. Whew, we're gonna have a fall down. Uh, I'm trying to focus. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Whew. Almost fell down there, guys. Saved us. Um, so yeah, you could see here. It was no. Uh, she was known for her the faux pearls that she integrated into the design of her jewelry. The pearls were created exclusively for Miriam Haskell. In in other words, like where they sourced those pearls, they had um, a few vendors that they utilized exclusively um, to create these high quality faux pearls for them. So uh, this to me, again, like I said, looks very very reminiscent of a Miriam Haskell. Um, some other elements that you can sometimes look for when you're looking for Haskell, potentially the open filigree back, and you will see the design elements of the earrings kind of wired to this uh, filigree frame. So, like I said, could be unsigned Miriam Haskell. Uh, very, very possible. There are a lot of unsigned Haskell pieces floating out there in the world. So, uh, regardless, very, very pretty, very old, pretty fabulous, I think. So I got those. Let's see if I can focus again without knocking you guys over. There we go. Um, yeah, you know, it was really, really nice. Um, Barbara over at Picky Chick, she reached out to me and asked me, you know, how I was doing. And she was sending me well wishes, which was really, really sweet of her. Um, it's just, it was like overwhelmed by the experience. And also um, it was really comforting just to hear from so many people. and asking how we were doing and whatnot. So uh, I think it's nice to think that we have a little jewelry family here on YouTube and you guys are all members of my jewelry family. I'm gonna get emotional, sorry, I'm hormonal. Um, <laughs> so again, in one of these bags here, she had this labeled as just gold tone necklace. And you know what I saw immediately, can you see it too? I saw this interlocking G-clasp. And I know that this is signature vintage Givenchy. So I want to say she had this in a bag for $2. She thought it was generic. And this is always what I'm looking for when I go out to an estate sale or to go thrifting. Um, you want to find those hidden gems. It is marked on the back as well with the Givenchy signature. Um, so this is a really fabulous vintage piece. It's very long. I want to say it's like 36 inches, which is very nice. It's kind of like a fancy wheat chain as well. It's got this beautiful like woven interlinked look to it um, in excellent condition, shiny, no tarnish, no wear. 
all of that good stuff. And I think for this, I could probably turn around and maybe sell it for, um, I would probably list this for like 125 and then see, uh, put a best offer on it and see what I can do there. So uh, with Givenchy, I find a lot of international buyers are usually on the lookout for it and or high-end retail stores that will turn around and then they will purchase it from you and then they will turn around and sell it for even more money. Um, which, you know, I don't have a problem with because their area of specialties or the audience that they've built for themselves who know them for their area of specialty, if that's high-end costume jewelry, follows them. And so maybe they'll be able to sell that necklace for $300 to that audience. Um, for me, I, you know, I, if I throw it up on eBay and we're talking about comparables on eBay, like I said, maybe like $125 with a best offer type of situation. I also got this... Um, this little pin right here, I thought that this was so cute. Uh, this to me looks uh, like something that maybe is from Austria. It is actually metal enameled flowers. I just thought it was super, super sweet. It looks very old. You can see the back is a, a gold tone right there. And the pin does extend a little bit past the clasp. Uh, oops, I don't wanna throw things. I don't wanna throw the old things. Um, this guy looks like this. I just think super, super sweet. I've seen this uh, previously. I think there's one on eBay currently, but it, it's all like a purple pansies or purple flowers. And then the person is calling it a suffragette pin just because it's purple. Um, but it is the same exact pin, just again with the enamel flowers in purple. But I love this. Very, very sweet. In good condition, considering its age. I like it. And um, for a few dollars. Yep, absolutely. What else did I pick up? Some odds and ends here. This one is a little bit weird, um, <laughs> but I just like him. Uh, I, I got this little gold tone crab pin with a little, uh, you know, red glass center right there. I just thought he was super cute. You guys have heard me say this. Folks in New Orleans are very into their seafood. <laughs> not only do they like to eat it, they like to wear it. So I'm not surprised. I, I find a lot of shrimp jewelry or crab jewelry or oyster themed jewelry. And so uh, this guy, just really cute. Um, he is not marked, but I like him. I think he's fun. He's joyful. So I picked him up and yeah, I'm looking now. He looks like he's almost the same color as that glass back there. I'll do a reverse image search and see if anything comes up. Like I said, I don't think it's anything that's like super, super high end, but yeah, I enjoy him. I think he's a fun little dude. Uh, I picked up this little guy, this one, I threw this again in the bag. It was just kind of swimming around in, in something. Uh, she had Ziploc bags, she had jewelry boxes, she had Tupperware containers, like just so much. And I was trying to be good. So this one is just a listener brooch, a uh, really pretty kind of um, square cut rhinestones on that very pl pretty blue like a Ceylon sapphire sapphire in that silver tone metal very nice listener listener little brooch good quality nice condition pick that guy up oh this is so cute this is random <clears throat> I saw this in one of the jewelry boxes and it's a it's like a little silver tone egg and you guys you, you're gonna like die when you see this. It opens up <laughs> and there's like an articulated gold tone chick chicken there. How cute is that? And then you can see it like moves back and forth. So you crack open the little egg and then there's a little like gold tone um, chicky in there. So cute. And this one actually inside was marked 925, so this is sterling silver, but I don't think she knew it was sterling silver. This one um, was $4. So adorable. I was just loving that. So I picked up that little dude. And a couple of other things. Another piece that I don't think she was, they were aware was sterling silver. I got this piece right here. And this is kind of like um, the spun silver look or canateel look here um very typical of european country spain would create this type of jewelry portugal would create this type of jewelry it's very like lacy and delicate and it had these again here we are with the mollusks it has these like little um mussel shells like they look like they're like little tiny mussels but they're gorgeous they are very lustrous and they have very pretty color to them and texture and um 
yeah, this was just like sitting there. I, I think someone must have assumed it was costume jewelry and it is marked on the spring ring, ring clasp that it is silver. And so this one, I think this was five or six, five dollars or six, I don't know. Um, it was more than the other stuff, but still very affordable. Um, so I think it's a great, beautiful piece of jewelry. Very, very different. I have not seen a kind of pieces with this spun silver and these like shells in them. So I think that's very, very different. So really lovely piece of jewelry there. Very out of the ordinary. Like I said, I feel like I don't see this typically done with that type of inset shell. So I picked that guy up. And what else? Let's see. A couple more pieces and then I think we're gonna call it a day, folks. Um, as per usual, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm happy to have you here and really especially today um you know not in addition to hurricane ida you guys know i'm from new york i was in new york d during september 11th so you know i'm just jewelry is a you know it's a little bit of a nice distraction uh just with everything else that's going on not to be too heavy anyway I picked up these little, um, a bag of moon glow necklaces and I have a soft spot in my heart for moon glow. And I really love this hand knotted yellow moon glow and it's got a hidden clasp. You can see the little clasps, the push clasp, it's right in there. And so that one was together with this one. And so just really pretty two little moon glow necklaces. These were $3 for the two necklaces. So those, very cute. I like the yellow one a lot. I think it's really cheerful and fun. Then I got, I got this random pair of earrings here. I just like the way they look. They're two-tone metal, mixed metal. They're giving me kind of like mid-century modern vibes. Um, I don't know. It's kind of got that like Sputnik, Sputnik kind of look. I don't know, the geometric component of it um and it's two-tone like I said silver tone and copper colored and I just thought these were, were cool and these were like a buck as well um they're not marked or anything but I just I think they're great looking I think they're very attractive um these would look really fabulous on you know as part of an ensemble really pretty just a nice size too not too big not too small and so, yeah, you guys, that's um, that's my little haul for today. Like I said, um, things are not back to normal here. A lot of stuff is still closed. Um, we're lucky because, like I said, our home was not harmed in any way, and we were really thankful for that. But I have neighbors a few doors down or around the corner, you know, like trees just fell into people's homes. Um, I passed a house today that looked like a tree fell on it, and then it like maybe caught on fire, like. It's, it's really, it's a lot, and um, people really have been through quite a bit here. Again, I don't want to be a downer, but this is kind of the reality of uh, what's going on. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, like I said, happy to have you here. Happy to have you along this journey. It was nice to go to an estate sale today and chat with people, and everyone was, um, I think, excited to get back into it as well just because it starts to feel like things are getting back to normal a little bit. It was a beautiful day. It was bright and sunny, and it was actually very cool. It was 67 degrees this morning, um, not 100 degrees anymore. So anyway, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And again, I thank you so much for all the well wishes you all sent me um, during this time frame, and I so appreciate you. Give me a like on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.